Uh, and that relationship is crucial right now. Uh, China seems to, to hear some cynics now walking all over us, uh, militarizing a lot of bases all over the world that even aren't, um, that, that they don't own. Um, this relationship with Peru is a good example where they're building a large shipping center um, that might have military consequences. Lieutenant Colonel Bob McGinnis joins us. Uh, divided We Stand, the globalist scheme for uh, one world government. Very smart fellow and good read on China as well. Always good to see you, Colonel. Let me ask you first about China and how uh, Donald Trump deals with them because it's changed markedly in just the last four years. Oh, it has. Um, you know, I think it's going to be a new proposition when he walks in with a homogeneous national security team. And of course, uh, he pl promises to clean house uh, those that are not uh, subscribing to his particular policies. So I, I think that's important. Also, I believe, Neil, his priorities will be stopping these uh, unhealthy wars, the one in the Ukraine, certainly the one that's affecting Israel. And then, of course, the one that we're, you know, probably, if we don't turn things quickly, uh, going to engage with in China. So he's going to, I think, uh, you know, threaten, you know, as he said, 60 percent tariffs against China. And of course, Xi is going there uh, today with you know, massive unemployment amongst his youth, uh, government and debt in the cellar. And then, of course, you know, arguably, he has you know, falling investment from the U.S. And, of course, the Bidens didn't help him by uh, including restrictions here recently on uh, U.S. investment in Chinese uh, artificial intelligence, quantum computing, and semiconductors. So there's a lot that's going to be discussed at 4 o'clock today. I'm not sure they can get it to at all. You know, I also wonder, uh, Colonel, what you make of China's uh, making of Donald Trump. Of course, they've worked with him. Xi Jinping has worked with him uh, in the first go round. And I'm just wondering what they see from him. Do they see this tariff threat as being something that won't be nearly so onerous that the president elect is going to throw out the possibility of just gargantuan tariffs um, and that it really won't be that bad or he'll follow through? Would that be a mistaken strategy on their part? Well, I, I think it might be. You know, he, he's serious about this, uh, much less against China and, and even the Russians and the Iranians. But I think that what she is concerned about is decimating his export sector. Uh, you know, Trump has made it clear he's going to bring back industry to the United States. And clearly, you know, the Biden administration's failure to really energize especially our industrial base to, you know, restock our arsenals and the like and to be competitive in Europe. All of these issues are on Mr. Trump's plate. And I think he'll deal with it uh, very aggressively. And, and we need to, you know, to pull out of not only inflation, but to, you know, address the debt and, of course, to raise our statue across the world. She's very much in competition. And it wasn't a mistake that the president of Peru today welcomed um, President Xi with a red carpet right, treatment. Right, I noticed that, yeah. Yeah, I, you know, they're they are signing 40 or, or more uh, trade deals today, re-energizing an old one. And, of course, you already mentioned the $3.5 billion port that could, you know, also play home to an aircraft carrier should Xi decide to, you know, twist their arms. So that uh, 40 other ports across South America, uh, and, of course, uh, you know, they have a ground station, you know, network throughout there for their space programs. I mean, it's really significant, especially you mentioned over the last, uh, what, 20 years, uh, Chinese trade with South America or Latin America has gone up 2,600 percent. So Xi is really uh, going over there, uh, I think, to uh, conduct a charm offensive across the region. He's already got a lot of leverage. Yeah. Uh, and this is very important, not only to China, but I think they want to make the region inhospitable to the U.S. And that's going to be a challenge for Mr. Trump as Mr. Biden leaves. Yeah, and money does talk on their part. Uh, let me ask you, Colonel, but finally about um, China and how it might respond to the threat of tariffs. There's growing talk that uh, they're rethinking a strategy of even wanting to participate as much in our debt auctions or treasury bills and bonds and notes, this kind of stuff that finances this massive debt to which you alluded. Um, now, they're, they're a big buyer of that debt. Um, and if, if they pull out or don't buy as much, 
it could lead to still higher interest rates, still more inflation. I'm, I'm wondering if that's what they're thinking. A lot of people and analysts are saying if, if Donald Trump goes far, they'll go far the other way. Where do you see all of this going? Well, Mr. Trump believes in transactions. And if he can get what he wants without, you know, you know, pushing China's economy over the cliff, uh, he'll do that. You know, he wants, you know, Russia out of Ukraine. He wants a, you know, a peaceful Middle East. In, in other words, with the strat strategic relationship that China has with Iran, they could put pressure on them. They could stop buying Iranian oil and therefore, you know, really get their attention. So there are a number of leverage points here, I think, that are critical that Mr. Trump can pull. And, and I, I suspect that uh, his you know, national security team, beginning with Waltz and, of course, uh, with you know, others that are lining up that are all anti, you know, China, you know, he's going to have plenty of opportunity and plenty of leverage, I think, to manipulate uh, the future direction of China, which is important for all of us. Got it, Colonel. Great catching up with you on all of the above. Um, thank you as well for your service uh, to this country. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.